بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the accursed. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self-subsisting, and all-sustaining. Slumber seizes Him not, nor sleep. To Him belongs whatsoever is in the heavens, and whatsoever is in the earth. Who is he that will intercede with him except by his permission? He knows what is before them and what is behind them, and they encompass nothing of his knowledge except what he pleases. His knowledge extends over the heavens and the earth, and the care of them burdens him not, and he is the high, the great. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. This is the second chapter of the Holy Quran. Al Baqarah means the cow. This chapter consists of 287 verses, including Bismillah. It was revealed in the first four years after the Hijrah. The very beginning of the chapter discusses fundamental beliefs such as Allah the Almighty, divine revelation, and belief in the hereafter. The importance of this surah. Surah Al-Baqarah has a deep connection with Surah Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha, though connected with all other surahs, is specially connected with Al-Baqarah. The latter is the fulfillment of the prayer, guide us on the right path, contained in the opening chapter of the Quran. Indeed, Al-Baqarah, with its discourses upon the signs, the book, the wisdom, and the means of purification, constitutes an appropriate and comprehensive reply to that great prayer. In Surah Al-Fatiha, three categories of people are mentioned, i.e. the favored ones, Mun'im alayhim, those who have incurred his displeasure, Maghdubi alayhim, and those who have gone astray, Ad-Dalin. After discussing the favored ones in Surah Al-Baqarah, the evil creeds, evil practices, wickedness and crookedness 
of the people who incurred his displeasure have been mentioned in detail. This the longest chapter of the Holy Quran is known as Al-Baqarah. The name was used by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. The surah was given this name because the word Baqarah, meaning cow, symbolizes an important incident related in the surah in the life of the Jewish nation and points to the fact that nations decay and fall. Now I will discuss some of the different names of the surah. There are a few different names used for this surah such as Alif, Lam, Mim, which are referred to as haruf e The Muqatta'at are abbreviations for specific attributes of God Almighty and the subject matter of a surah before which they are placed has a deep connection with the divine attributes for which they stand. Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran are prefaced with the abbreviated letters Alif, Lam, Mim indicating a kinship between their contents. Alif Lam Mim, meaning Anallahu A'lamu, I am Allah the All-Knowing. Surah Baqarah is also called As-Sanam. It is reported in hadith that the Holy Prophet wasallam said that everything had its pinnacle and the Holy Quran's pinnacle was Surah Al-Baqarah. There is a verse in this surah which is the chief of all verses and this verse is known as Ayat al-Kursi, the verse of the throne. Surah Baqarah is also referred to as Az-Zahra. Hadrat Abu Umama, radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, reported the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, recite the Holy Quran from the day of resurrection. It will come as an intercessor for its reciters. Recite az zaharawain the two illuminated chapters, Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran. For on the day of resurrection, they will come as two clouds, or two shades, or two flocks of birds, pleading for those who recited them. Recite Surah Al-Baqarah, as there is blessing in it, there is sorrow in leaving it, and the sorcerers cannot confront it. In one narration, it was called Fustat, which is al Madina al jami i.e. a large city. A large city has many inhabitants, different people of different trades, different buildings, etc. Similarly, Baqarah is like that, in that it encompasses many different topics. Now I will mention some of the prophets mentioned in Surah Baqarah. This surah gives accounts of various prophets and has also identified the challenges Islam was going to face until the last day. Some of the prophets mentioned in the surah are Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, Hazrat Ishaq alayhi salam and Hazrat Harun alayhi salam. Surah Al-Baqarah also includes matters regarding Salat, fasting, Zakat and Hajj. The supplications of Hazrat Ibrahim and Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam are specifically mentioned, which they made at the time of the reconstruction of the house of Allah the Khan Kaaba. It mentions the transgression of the Jews in great detail, matters regarding striving in the way of Allah. It speaks about the teachings of the book and wisdom. This refers to as the laws of Sharia laid down in the chapter and to the wisdom or philosophy which underlies them. After a description of fundamentals like belief in God, the last day, the divine revelations and the prophets of God, we have ordinances about prayer, fasting, pilgrimage, and then laws relating to marriage, divorce, the care of orphans and widows, the laws of inheritance, etc., along with the wisdom underlying these laws and ordinances. Surah Baqarah contains 287 verses. Surah Baqarah was revealed at Medina. It began to be revealed in the first year of the Hijrah, the migration, and was completed only a short time before the demise of the Holy Prophet It is also the longest chapter in the Holy Quran. 
it contains the longest verse of the Holy Quran, verse 283. And it reportedly contains the last revealed verse of the Holy Quran also, verse 282. Some of the important verses in Surah Al-Baqarah is the chief of all verses, Ayat al-Kursi, verse 256, the verse of the throne. The Holy Prophet is reported to have once said, Everything has its peak, and the peak of the Qur'an is Al-Baqarah. And in this surah there is a verse which is the most eminent among the verses of the Qur'an, and that is Ayat al-Kursi. Again it says, Whoever shall recite ten verses of this chapter, the first four verses, the Ayat al-Kursi, along with the two verses which come after it, and the last three verses, Satan will not enter his house. This only means that these verses embody the essence of Islamic teaching, and that Satan cannot come near the man who faithfully acts upon these teachings. The Holy Prophet wasallam has said, the last two ayat, the last two verses from the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, whoever reads them at night, it will suffice him. Surah Al-Baqarah contains many comprehensive prayers, du'as. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ رَبَّنَا وَاجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا ثَبْرًا وَثَبِّتْ عَقْدَامَنَا سَمِئْنَا وَأَطَّعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ المصير رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَاخِذْنَا إِنْ نَسِيْنَا أَوْ وَخْطَأْنَا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In today's program, in this segment, inshallah, we are going to learn the rules of recitation of verse number 44 in chapter 2. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةَ وَارْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ now, according to our format of the program, first of all, in each slide, we are going to focus one word. In last program, I explained that va is a connecting particle, is always, is a part of the next word. So this one, wa'aqimu. And the first point to be noted here that four vocalized letters means four points or four consonants, four letters are being articulated, pronounced in this word. Wa with fatha, then uh, alif, uh, hamza alif, then qaf, and then meem. And two letters of elongation, and that will two counts. For example, Qaf is a consonant, and that is followed by Ya, which is Ya Madhya. So in this case, two letter, two counts of uh, elongation will take place. So there are two letters of elongation, Ya and uh, Vau, Aqi and Mu, and two counts uh, elongation will take place. Then the third point is that there is one thick letter in this, uh, in these words, and that is Qaf. This is Qaf, that is a thick letter. All other letters are thin, but this Qaf, in all cases, it is considered and it to, it, uh, to be articulated with a full mouth and uh, heavy sound. And then the fourth point is that dropping the letter of elongation in joining. Now, I explained that this meme will be elongated because of vow maddiya. This vow is a letter of elongation. Is only when we are not joining to the next word, which is a mushadar letter here, sort. When we join to the next letter, this vow will be dropped. And then we say, wa aqi mus salata, and straightway meme, uh, vocal meme, 
or uh, this letter with the dhamma will be with the sod and two count elongation uh, will take place wa aqimu simple and uh, this is simple next word is uh, this one as salata points to be noted that blank alif uh, with fatha meaning this alif which is after as salata the first letter alif when we pronounce this word alif blank alif will take fatha because the rule is that any word starting with alif lam and the blank alif will always take fatha so in this case i will pronounce as salata and then second point is that empty lam or non vocal lam and this is after alif there is a lam and this lam will be ignored straight away we will join alif with fatha to sod with fatha which is here and that is uh, you know this lam will not be pronounced here it will be written all the time it will be written but it will not be pronounced because this letter when the next letter is a mushaddad in this case sod this lam will be ignored and then the third point is that there is one thick letter in this word as salata and this word is this letter is sod so as i mentioned in the last word qaf and this sod in all cases whatever stroke comes over that uh, it will remain a uh, heavy sounded letter and will be pronounced with thick sound the fourth point is that fatha ishbaiya which, which is vertical stroke that represents alif maddiya so in this case lam and fatha uh, ishbaiya fatha ishbaiya and that will be you know will be joined as salata alif will be there meaning it will be prolonged up to two counts and then the fifth point is that this is rasmul khat rasmul khat mean there is a special way of writing uh, quranic arabic and in this case this word wow will be part of the uh, this uh, writing is a in a spelling but it will not be pronounced in this case it always be written otherwise if there is a non quranic arabic this wow is not written now and only after lam alif uh, is manifested is written and straight away the pronunciation will remain the same but this is a rasmul khat that we have to learn and we have to practice and keep with the tradition and then the sixth point is that ha sakina and ha sakina in waqf you can see here this ta uh, ta this is ta marbuta ta marbuta means when we are going to make a waqf on that one uh, this letter this letter will change into ha sakina so the translate uh, the pronunciation will be as salah you know ha will be manifested in a mute position next word is waatu all thin letters including wa and hamza alif ta and uh, waw and alif two count rule will be applied here if we say a two counts tu two, two counts a tu two counts rule of elongation will and here in a tu waw maddiya this waw maddiya when we pronounce this word separately but as we dealt with aqimu the same rule will be applied here if we are joining to the next word which is az zakata then this waw will be ignored and will not be pronounced straight we will say atu zakata and this waw maddiya then will not be waw maddiya but that will be just an empty or blank waw waw maddiya is only at that time when it is not joining to the next mushaddad letter and then it say uh, as i mentioned dropping in vessel in joining as i mentioned that one and then the next word is az zakata i have already explained blank alif fatha empty lam non vocal and another information that any lam after alif if any lam is empty of any harakat any stroke uh, then it will be called sun letter allamu shamsi allamu shamsi means this lam will not be pronounced and the next letter uh, 
will be with a, most of the time, especially in the Quran, that will be a mushadad letter. In this case, a zakata. And again, rasmul khat, the same as we have dealt with a salata, it will be dealt with a zakata. Wow, will be written there, but will not be pronounced. And if we uh, reflect on each letter, alif, lam, za, kaf, wow, and ta marbuta, all thin letters. And ta marbuta into ha sakina in waqf, the same. Uh, treatment as we did with as salata. So it will be as zakah. Next word is warka'u. Ra sakina here, ra with a spoon, and there is a conditional thick sound, meaning when there is a ra uh, sakin, and before that is a fatha, in this case, wow, war, so the ra will be thickly uh, pronounced. War. And then uh, be mindful of ayn sound. It should be ayn, not hamza. So it will be wrong, say, warka'u, warka'u. So middle of throat. All thin letters except one. So in this case, vow, alif, uh, ra, kaf, all thin letters except one. This is a conditional thickness will be applied here on ra sakina because I said ra sakina will be thick when the previous letter, previous vocal letter, which is in this case wa, is with fatha or with dhamma. So no change in two count elongation. So if say warka'u, whatever case, minimum two counts. And if we are, uh, you know, that, that, that will remain the same. And then next word is ma'a, both thin letters, meem and ayn, be mindful of ayn, do not mix with hamza and ayn sakina in work, it will be ma as common Arab people when they use this one. Sometimes the ayn is not pronounced with the fatha, I say ma. So simple, but here is ma'a always with the next word. And then Next word is ar again, blank alif and lam. Same rule will be applied here, al shamsi ar because the ra with the fatha ishbaiya or fatha, normal fatha, always will be pronounced with a heavy sound, mufakham, thick pronunciation. And ra ishbaiya, uh, vertical fatha. Ya maddiya, ayn. Next letter is ya, and this ya will be maddiya because ayn will be pro, uh, prolonged because of this ya. And then maddul waqf, the waqf uh, elongation pertaining to stop and extra elongation will be applied if needed. For example, simple is two, two counts, ma'ar ra'ki'in, two counts, it could be four or six max. Maximum. And now this is the full verse, and I will recite now. Wa aqimu salata wa atu zakata wa arka'u ma'arraki'in. In this segment of the program, we are going to explore grammatical analysis of verse 44 of chapter 2. Now, the first word combined va and aqimu. In the last class, I explained that va, which is a connecting particle, va with fatha or va with fatha, with a connecting particle, is always part of the next word. And this is because this is a continuation with the previous verses as well. And sometime it comes in the middle of verse, 
it is a connecting particle, is a vow atifa. And aqimu is a verb, is an imperative. Aqimu means establish. And this is imperative, it is plural, it is masculine, and mark of recognition is vow. And in terminology, it will be called fi'lul amr. And after wa'aqimu, this alif is a part of spellings, and this is a protective alif. Inshallah, in terminology, it will be explained in the future classes. But this is a protective alif, is a letter of demarcation. The third point is that this word aqimu, the base letters or root letters or radical letters are qaf, waw, and me. And from here, and this qaf, waw, me, in these root letters, many words have been used in the Quran. And in fact, this is used abundantly, this has been used abundantly in the Holy Quran. 660 times these root let letters have been used in different formats, in different forms. And the first, aqimu, if we reflect on this word, aqama is a perfect tense, aqama, he established. Yuqimu, imperfect. And iqamatan is a verbal noun. And aqim is an imperative, is his failure amr, and this is a singular and masculine. The famous verse is that aqim is salata. And here the word aqimu, we can say here imperative. This is amr, this is a masculine. And also this is a plural. And the mark of recognition of the plural is wow, aqimu. And the, there are range of meanings of this uh, letter this word of wow mean and it includes to establish to continue with determination to keep standing with firm intention next word is as salat and as we can see here that alif lam it starts with alif lam and this is a sign of definite noun al ismul marifa and because it has been used after a verb which is aqimu that will be objective case. And see that last letter, that is with fatha. So words accepting a change of stroke in the last letter, there are uh, some letters, they accept the change. And this is a word which accepts the change. So this ta marbuta as salata with fatha. And in this case, this is al maf'ul al in objective case. And this word root letters is sod, lam, and vow. And if we go to analysis of uh, different tenses, it will be salla, as we say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a perfect al madi singular, and third person, and masculine. And yusalli, imperfect, singular, third person, and masculine. And the verbal noun, very famous, is salatan. And the one who offer the salat is called al-musalli. As-salatu is a definite noun because alif lam has come in the beginning. And as-salabat is a plural. Um, and uh, there is a verse, one verse, which is very famous and it includes this is a singular and also a plural as salawat and that is in part two and verse number 
chapter 2 and verse number 239. Hafidu ala wasta. That was. Next word is wa'atu. And again, this is an imperative, meaning amr, commandment, plural, sign of uh, plural is wow, masculine, and the mark of recognition I already told you. Root letters alif, ta, and ya. And this, this is also alif, ta, ya, you know, on the, these are radicals or root letters which have been extensively used in the Holy Quran as well, uh, 549 times. So, Atta, perfect, Madhi, singular, third person, masculine, and Yukti, imperfect, singular, third person, and masculine, and its verbal noun is Ita'an, to give. And Ati is imperative, Amr, singular, and masculine. Very famous prayer, Rabbana Atina Fid Dunya. Hasanatam wa fil akhirati hasan. And atu is an imperative. So ati is a singular masculine. Atu is a plural masculine. And we say wa atu and give. And remember there are uh, meaning is that to give something to someone. And this verb include two objects. To give someone something. The next word is az-zakat. Alif lam, it starts with alif lam, sign of al-ismul marifa, definite noun. The root letters are za, kaf, and waw. And some say that za, kaf, and ya. But the most uh, well-known, famous is za, kaf, and waw. And from these root letters, Zaka is a perfect, Yasku is an imperfect, and same third person, singular, masculine, and again imperfect, you know, third person, singular, and masculine. And Zakaun is a verbal noun, and Azzakatu is a uh, definite noun with starting with Alif Lam. And there are a range of meanings of this word to increase, to nourish, to be more. Bless, blessing, and uh, purification, range of meanings. And the next word is warqa'u. Again, wa is a part of irqa'u, verb, imperative, meaning commandment. Mark of recognition is wow at the end, and the sign of plural, and is in masculine, telul am. Root letters are ra, kaf, and ayin. Raka'a. Perfect, singular, third person, and masculine. Yarkau, imperfect, same as we did with the previous words. And ruku'an is a verbal noun. Ruku is a very common with regards to the recitation of the Holy Quran, is a, a, a particular position in our salat. And the one who does this one means ruku. It is called raki'un and ismul fa'il, you can say. The doer, subject, raki'un. And irka, which is imperative, singular, masculine. And irka'u, imperative, plural, and again the masculine. And here the warka'u, and you all bow down to perform raku in salat, to bow down due to humbleness, range of meanings, but in, uh, in terminology, it is in this verse, meaning be with them, those who bow down in that position in Salat. And the next two words is Ma'a and ar -in. Remember Ma'a is an adverb of place and location. And it is called Verful Makan. Ma'a is used to indicate a place, a location. And the word 
ar raqi'in we have already covered with the, the previous verb raka'a yarqa'u ruku'an raqi'un and raqi'in is a, is a plural of uh, it's not imperative is uh, ismul fa'il and it is mentioned there so underneath the terminology has been uh, written al madi perfect imperfect it's called al mudari ruku'an al masdar raqi'un ismul fa'il and wahid mufrad and ismul fa'il jama raqi'in jama lo se Ur-e-a-nure Jaan-e har musalma hai Jamal-o-husayne ur e a nure jaan e قمر ہے چاند اوروں کا ہمارا چاند قرآن قرآن فکر کر دیکھا نظیر اس کی نہیں جمتی نظر میں یکتا کلام پاک رحما ہے بھلا کیوں کرنا ہو یکتا کلام پاک بہار جاویدہ پیدا ہے اس کی ہر عبارت میں بہار جاویدہ پیدا ہے اس کی ہر عبارت میں نہ وہ نہ اس سا کوئی بستا ہے قمر ہے چاند 
औरों का हमारा चांद कुर्रा है बना सकता नहीं एक पाओ कीड़े का बशर बना सकता नहीं एक पाओ कीड़े का बशर हर गिज तो फिर क्यों कर बनाना नूर हक कौ से पे है तो फिर क्यों कर बनाना नूर हक का उस पे आसा है जमालो से ने कुरानु जाने हर मुसलमान है कमर है चांद और In class two, in this segment, I am going to cover Ra and Ta Marbuta. You may remember in the last class, we covered Seen and Wow. Seen, Wow, Majmu, and then today Ra and Ta. And last program was uh, because that was focused on Surat Al Fatiha. And this class is focused on Surat Al Baqara, Surat Al Baqara, twenty ninth June. So there are different checks. So write and check your own work. So check one is that the first part of Ra Al Mursal should be two point five dots nukta long. So Ra, you can see here. Is two point five, one two, and this five, and uh, similarly, if I say mizan of this one, again one, two, and this two and half, the first check. The second check head or crown or uh, hilia, which is this head and this, you know, uh, like this, and this part hilia. That should be from top to its bottom will be one dot long. So this is length. In this case, it will be one dot. So if we take that, you know, any like this, one and this, one dot. And if we take that one, you know, like this, that length, one dot. The third check is that the head, the crown, of raw from edge to edge shall be one dot wide. So that is length. But if we take that as a wide, the width, this edge and this edge, you know, this is again one dot. So one dot long length and one dot 
is uh, white so it can be checked here as well this is the edge starting from here the hilia you see the head and if we take this is uh, one dot and the fourth check is that from bend to bottom it will be six dots so the first you know this is the bend and from here to here is six so this is one two three four five six so now in this case if we take another writing and from here and to here it should be six one two three four five and this is exactly six you know because a little down here so that's compromised here now check five is that looking from head to the first bend inside the depth will be one dot approx so you see this is starting point here you know this and from here to if we draw a line this is you know uh, starting from here this one or you can see in this this is the edge and straight line and inside depth of this bend is one one cut or one dot if we take this one cut one cut or one dot so this is one dot check six is that looking from first bend outside so this is outside this is the, the the this one the first and the bend the first bend and if we take that looking from first bend outside to the second bend this is the first bend and here is the second bend like first bend up to here and then again this one you know uh, this and then again like that you know the first bend second and this close so check is that looking from the first bend which is here or in this case is here outside not inside then the second bend will be two dots approximately and altogether 2.5 to the baseline so if we take that one and two and 2.5 or you know like this one 2.5 check seven is that from second bend approaching to bottom line which is pointed form from here to here it is 2 to 2.5 so this is the first and if we down this bend it would be 2 2 or maybe 2.5 so this is the second bend. so the helia the head one nukta wide and long length first bend 2.5 2, .5, two the first bend or from here to the bottom 2.5 this 2 and this is 6 so that's going to be seven checks of raw al mursal like for example this and this anyway so again look this one 2.5 and uh, one from here to here one this two from here uh, one inside depth six two and if we make it like here simple is 2.5
this is exactly all together so that is raw and now we come to ta marbuta ta marbuta you can see here so i have written today one two or three okay so anyway so let's see up to here big one so the first check head of the letter will be three quarters to one dot so you see it is less than one one nukta up to here three quart okay and similarly the same will be with the the width width and length maximum one but less than and you can you can see here the second check from start to first bend from start to the first bend here this is the first bend here because it's here and then first bend it should be three dots approximately so starting from if we take this is start and one two uh, or you can see here if we take that this side yeah actually these, these are the three so yeah this is because this bent we are take, talking about this bent so this bent should be three one two and three approximately because here is something so three round and then third check from second band to the third band the length shall be 1.5 so this little compromised so that's it should be from here to here 1.5 so this and this 1.5 to 2 so 1 and 2 1.2 and then third check from second band to third band the length should be 1.5 to 2 dots second band to the third band you know from here to so i mentioned that one check for the width from top shall be two dots edge to edge so from here to here it could be two dots one and two because this one so if we take that from inside is exactly this is also inside and that two dots two dots this this edge and check five crossing of first band and the third band right in the middle right in the middle look if we write in the middle this one will be one dot right one dot so if we draw a line straight away this is around one dot here one dot here we can check you know is here and this this one and two one and two 
this is exactly in the middle this and this and conveniently all together is one sometime little more and similarly here this or sim this one because it makes a triangle triangle yeah it's triangle okay check six inside space triangle will be one dot so i mentioned that check seven inside depth from right and left inside depth this is inside this is also inside from right side and left side that will be one so if we take that less than one and here will be more because it will coming from this side it will be more more here less here so that's another point meaning right side depth will be more than left side now you can see here there's more and there's a bit less and check eight is that end of second band first band second band will be touching the base which is uh, simple touching the base and here it will be a bit up like i think this is a good example half dot above so if we take that this this is half dot above this one half dot above this this will be checking second band baseline khatul asas and look this one here is little this is exactly in the middle and in between two dots edge edge to edge you see there is a quarter dot or uh, maximum half is uh, can be you know there is a flexibility of this one according to different uh, school of uh, writing iraqi school of thought or school of writing or turkish those these are the main custodian of this great fun so that is the conclusion of ra al mursal and ta marbuta as more we write our writing our composition will be more accurate and uh, more beautiful and crisp so that is al baqara al baqara here and uh, similarly you can from here so we covered suratun seen waw ra and ta you can see here this one for example to, written today so this is exactly another point which was i think i missed that the right top will be more as compared to the second always not equal not equal should be this one so similarly and edge to edge two dots exactly in the middle you know this middle and look this one baseline and half dot more here less here triangle and conveniently you know one dot so this and if we take that this one this is exactly so that's my moment you can make okay that's the conclusion surah al baqara yes this is again this Uh, 
this one. Triangle one. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.